Broadcasting live from Pacific Lutheran University in Tacoma, Washington, this is the Radio Hour, a convergence of mass, mass media and laser, Lute Air Student Radio. It's Tuesday, February 23rd. I'm Monica Payne. I'm Paris Franklin. And I'm Eddie McCoven. Glad to have you all listening tonight on this Tuesday night as uh, my colleagues and I from mass media bring you the latest in on-campus news, intriguing Lute Life stories, and more. Make sure you visit massmedia.plu.edu for all this and everything else. Our story that we're starting off the show with tonight is The Call. So what exactly is The Call? Are we talking about a phone call? Are we talking about... Not quite, Eddie. No, not quite. So... As some of you might know, uh, at the end of last academic year, uh, pastors Dennis and Nancy actually um, retired. They left the campus, and that left us without a university pastor. Of course, with a being a religiously affiliated school, Pacific Lutheran University is affiliated with the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. We have a student congregation, the university congregation, and so a pastor has to serve that congregation and serve the rest of the campus community as well. Right now, we have uh, Pastor John Rosenberg uh, serving as our interim campus, uh, past, or interim university pastor. And even though a lot of students and staff have really gotten to know him and really like him, the unfortunate thing is uh, he's not going to be here after May. He's retired. I mean, he's, we need to let the man enjoy his life. He's he's already retired. He's like, I've retired already. I'm just kind of doing this as a favor. Yeah, he came out of retirement just because that's how much he loves us. Exactly. And he was actually here in the 70s. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, he actually, his first, I think, call out of seminary was being here for a year. So wow. he was here for, for a him. year back in the yeah. 70s. So it's a great way to start and end his career. Definitely. And uh, Paris, you've got a little more about this story. Yeah. So speaking of interim pastor John Rosenberg, he also was just the one who was in charge of creating the job description and posting it to the public. So now the application period for our new university pastor is open and it'll last for about two months. So all of the nominations are screened through the Southwestern Washington Synod. And it's unknown how many applications have been received at this time, but Pastor Rosenberg is expecting 50 to 60 people to apply, and he's pretty excited just because he knows that there's a possibility of having a great new person come in and be able to either continue what he's done or some of the work of the other pastors that have been here over the years. Definitely. And... um it's interesting to note um, there is going to be an article about this in the Mass. You can read about that this Friday. Um, but um, it's interesting because we've got to think here. We've got a you know we had we had two pastors who were husband and wife, and they were here for you know almost twenty years serving the campus, and that's a that's a very long time to be at one place, let alone at a at a college where college ministry is kind of like come and go. You, you don't stay very long. So it's interesting to see that we've gone from having, you know, two pastors on staff to now our requirements is to only have one. And the requirements are because of the university congregation that the pastor has to be um, on the roster of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. So if we an example, if we had the budget again to hire more than one pastor, we could have a pastor from the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. We can have pastor number two be like from, you name it, um, the Episcopal Church or whatever else. Uh, we do have an honorary chaplain who's a rabbi. We do. That is Rabbi Bruce Caden from Temple Bethel. Yes. And he's a professor here on campus too. So uh, pretty cool guy. But, you know, getting back to this whole thing is that... Um, there was there's something interesting about the fact that we're calling a pastor because we have we used to have chapel three days a week here and if some of you didn't know this chapel used to be mandatory you actually had to go to chapel whether you were Lutheran otherwise Christian or not and attendance was taken so you had to be at chapel and, and that was before swiping in so that was a lengthy process it I was imagine. a very lengthy <laughs> process and um, the other interesting thing about this is that um, University congregation as well wasn't required, but students went to it and um, they had to, it, an alumni said this really well. He said, you know, we didn't have email back then. So if you needed to get a hold of your professor on the weekend, 
you had to go to university congregation because your pr- your professor was at university congregation. So during coffee hour afterwards, you would just go, oh, hi, professor. How are you? Great. I have this question. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I so, didn't know you'd be here. What a coincidence! Well, that's what this particular alumni told me. He said, "Well, no, if you want to talk to your to your professor, you had to go to university congregation." Uh, you are listening to the Radio Hour, brought to you by Mass Media here on Laser Loot Air Student Radio. I'm Eddie McCoven, and uh, we are talking about the call here with Paris Franklin, our co-host tonight. We're talking about the call of the of the new university pastor, and. You know, the other thing that I think is going to be interesting, 900 students filled out a a survey about their participation in campus ministry, and the overwhelming result of uh, students said they wanted contemporary worship, and that's why they didn't attend. In fact, attendance um, at chapel has been really bad. It went down to one day a week because we used to be three days a week in Lagerquist, and we couldn't fill the hall. (laughs) So then now it's Nest Family Chapel. Now it's Nest Family Chapel one day a week and we and University Congregation finally moved out of Loggerquest Hall and they're in Nest Family Chapel. So it's a lot of shrunk. downsizing. It's a lot of downsizing and it really shrunk, but one of the things that I can hope is is that the campus ministry council who will be hiring the new pastor will look into that survey and they will intentionally maybe bring somebody on board who has experience in contemporary worship who has experience working outside of the lutheran bubble yeah (laughs) and um you know we 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 want a lutheran pastor we're a lutheran school but definitely want somebody who's more ecumenical and can reach out to all these other groups that are on campus that, you know, are almost a majority. Definitely. And it's such an important job, and it's being selected by such a large group of important people on campus because the application process is very lengthy, and once the interview process is over, then the nominating committee is selecting the top five to seven applicants and narrowing the pool down to three with the Campus Ministry Council and Pastor Rosenberg. And then the top three are presented to University President Thomas Kreis and Vice President of Student Life, Dr. Joanna Royce Davis, and they will select the final applicant. All right. Thank you, Paris, for that. So uh, speaking of religious life here on campus, just this past weekend, there was a gospel experience here in the Karen Hilly Phillips Center last Saturday. Of course, the gospel experience, I believe this is the third third time that they've done it on campus it is a part of the celebration of black history month and of course a lot of us you know associate gospel music with the black church or black churches and so it was a great event and i went last year and last year was pretty awesome i was there again this year because i actually got to sing as a part of the plu gospel choir and there were groups from all over South Puget Sound. Um, there were some groups from up north as well. And there were some amazing, amazing artists who were there. And if you didn't go to the gospel experience, then you really, really missed out. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I got to say about that. Unfortunately, I was unable to attend, but I'm sure you have more to tell us about it. I do. And <laughs> other than the fact that Last year, the PLU Gospel Choir was started, and interesting enough is that this was not the first time PLU has had a gospel choir on campus. The most uh, recent incarnation that I think we looked into at the MAST was around 2002 or something like that, and again, it was another student-run group. Um, A lot of people don't realize this, but the gospel choir is a religious club under the Office of Campus Ministry, so it's not a four-credit class there's no music director there's no music faculty member leading this um it is a a partnership that started with the office of admissions with melanie cunningham being the director of multicultural admissions Mm -hmm. and um, it started as an outreach to get students who come from these different backgrounds to be a part of plu and so the interesting thing is we had a uh, a ninth grader from spanaway lake and his name escapes me right now, but he came and sang with the choir, and he sang a solo at morning prayer this last week, and it was like hashtag amazing. Wow! And he not says, just amazing. Yeah, it was so hash- amazing that you want to hashtag it on the internet so I, other people I can tweeted go and it. find that. Oh, you I did. did. I did tweet it. I'm proud and, of you. Yes, Keep and with the times. <laughs> and he said, and I want to come to PLU. I was like. That's awesome because you need to be in our music department. So, but anyway, it was a fun experience. Um, there was last year there was twenty something 
uh, students in the in the gospel choir, and there's only just a handful of community members. This year it was two handfuls of community members and only four students. So once again, seeing that downsizing across the religious activities on campus, that's quite interesting. It's un- it's unfortunate, but I think really it's a great opportunity, uh, especially for people like myself, to step outside of your comfort zone, to be in a group of people who you don't know, They're, they don't go to school here, and their talents and their music is different. But when you add it all together, it's a joyful noise. And it was a fun time. Well, and so. you were mentioning that the before we were on air that the woman who does that, who's the leader of that, just does everything by ear and that she's really successful yes, with... Tracy, yeah. yes, does everything by ear. There's no sheet music on anything. <laughs> that's we special. don't get sheet music. So that's, yeah. <laughs> all right, well... This is the Radio Hour, and if you want to call in tonight, the number here is 253-535-7332. That's 535-7332. Make sure to follow us on Facebook.com slash PLU Mass Media, or tweet us at PLU Mass to add your voice to the discussion this evening. We will live tweet you right back. We will live tweet you right back. We would right, love to hear from you. Right back. Preferably calling in, because calling in is fun. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So coming up after the break, we are going to be featuring uh, the return of NPCC, the return of NPCC. And if you don't know what NPCC is, uh, listen to us. No, after the break. no, Pococo. All right. <laughs> that doesn't make it any more clear. <laughs> so we're just going to keep you in suspense if you aren't already aware of what no Pococo slash NPCC is. <laughs> so uh, right now we're going to go to a music break. Here is Rihanna with work. This is the Radio Hour. Welcome back to the Radio Hour here on Laser Loot Air Student Radio. That was My Youth by Troy Savon. And before that, we had Work by Rihanna. 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 Thank you. Okay. (laughs) Not that I don't pronounce people's names right anyway. All right. So, if you've been down Garfield Street lately, you know that a much-loved treasure of the community closed for a few months. It was all sad and boarded up. I mean, there was also 208, but I'm just saying. (laughs) There was another place that we needed to fuel our caffeine addiction, and it was not available to us. There was also Reina's and Ferrelli's and, uh, I don't know, the Tea Leaf. Does anybody anybody go to the Tea Leaf? I've never heard of that. It's the Chinese Mm -hmm. restaurant. The answer is no. (laughs) <laughs> that was Libby. That was Our new everybody. voice on campus. Libby, yes. say hi. Libby, say hi. And, hi. And introduce yourself. Libby. I'm the cute one. Okay. Uh, it's Libby. true. You can't she see is. us, but it's the truth. Yes. Libby Postavoy. You got it. I think that he should get some prize money, maybe a scholarship. You, speak yeah, it, usually speak nobody into gets the mic. that name. Speak into the mic. Yes. It's a Ukrainian last name, so it's very hard to pronounce. Good job, Eddie McCoven. You have redeemed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Libby. Thank you. So, but I guess, yeah, NPCC or Nopacoco has been a, you know, just the hangout spot. It's like the, the other watering hole for PLU. You know, so the people who don't go to the Haven go to <laughs> NPCC. So, Paris, I think... Who, wait, no, Monica. Yeah, Monica. Yeah, hello. Monica Payne. Story. Hello Mon- there. Yeah, Monica Payne, uh, you've got the story. So tell us, what is, for our for our uh, 20 listeners who are listening and have not been to e- NPCC. Is that how many people are listening right now? Uh, yes. Hi. Hello. We love you all. All right. We appreciate you spending your Tuesday evenings consistently with us. Yes, thank you so much. Monica, tell us about NPCC. All right. So Northern Pacific Coffee Company is back and better than ever. The coffee shop on Garfield Street reopened January 18th under the new management of Wes Johnson. Johnson, a Tacoma Tacoma native, I apologize, briefly worked under the old... He's from (laughs) Tacoma. Tacoma. Tacoma, don't you know? (laughs) Don't you know? All right. He's apparently also from Minnesota. Anyway. Eh? And Canada, too. Anyway. Anyway. Minnesotans uh, Minnesotans and Canadians, they have that same... eh? going on eh, I, I, I know a Minnesotan she's more or less she doesn't sound Canadian no but I bet she's as nice as a Canadian she no really <laughs> I oh. love her but I was well, gonna say, people she, from when the she Midwest, wants to be when usually she wants they're to be. so nice 
No, when she wants to be, but she oh. she can be real. I love her though. So I getting back to West yeah, Johnson, no Pacoco. <laughs> okay, so back to no Pacoco. Uh, they, uh, I apologize. Johnson briefly worked under the old NPCC management. It's too late to apologize. <sighs> it's, it's too, too late. late. Eight. Eh. <laughs> I love you guys. This story has just been a mess. <laughs> there is no consistency, and we won't let poor Monica talk about this very important coffee shop. Wait, 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 wait. I think are we, we're doing pretty good time on the show, right? Yeah. I okay, so. let's just do a do-over. Okay. Just read it again. Just, okay. just, just everybody take stop. Take two. Everybody stop. T- deep breaths. All right, take two. If you've been down Garfield Street, you know that there's been a beloved little establishment that has been missing from the community for the past couple months that is in pcc and if you don't know what in pcc is or nopococo monica has got the story monica thank you so much eddie northern pacific coffee company is back and better than ever the coffee shop on garfield street reopened january 18th under the new management of west johnson Johnson, a Tacoma native, briefly worked under the old NPCC management, and before that was working in the coffee industry for eight years. That's a lot of coffee. Lots of it. Yes. He must make one good cup of joe. He does. Well, the he coffee. makes a good cup of joe, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just ruined it. <laughs> Thank story, you so much. The story was so good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, it's an important coffee shop. I yes. I went there actually for the first time after it was opened under the new management, and I thought they did a great job. It reminded me a lot of my favorite coffee shop from back home. I saw tons of other loots there, as well as some adults from the Parkland community. There were dogs. I don't know if that's a health code violation, but I was having a great time petting them. Helen Smith is on the show tonight. Helen, have you been to NPCC? I have not, but um, I've heard a ton about it from, like, everyone that I've seen in the past week, so... And they've all said it's, like, the place to go. Yeah. All right. There's lots cool. of homework to be done in there. Yeah. Libby, did you, have you been to NPCC? It has saved me for many an all-nighter. Okay. There we go. And we have Julia Grovner here, too. Julia, have you been or no? I have not. Okay. So... <laughs> so everyone should scurry on down. It's a good place to be. They also have open mics, I believe, on Wednesday evenings. And they have some really cool artwork in there, lots of books to peruse if you so desire. It's just all in all a great environment, and we encourage you to go because if you're a coffee or a music lover, that's where you need to go. You should go. And it's a local business, so, you know, support your local support business. Local. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, I know it's... Uh, it's that time again where I have to tell you, you are listening to the Radio Hour, brought to you by Mass Radio, a convergence between Loot Air Student Radio and Mass Media. I am Eddie McCoven, joined on the show tonight by Paris Franklin Hello. and and Monica Payne, who is Hello. our guest host this evening. And, of course, we've got Libby, Helen, and Julia working on production in here. Thank you, ladies, for being here tonight. My pleasure. Our pleasure. Yes. Awesome. So... Coming up after the break, we are going to be talking about vandalism. Wait. Wait, you, wait, no, wait, hold on. Wait, no, Eddie, hold on. Wait. You are let you, you are just skipping oh. around. You're skipping the most important movie of the season. Am I? Yes. Tell us more about that because I haven't seen it. Wait, are, are you talking about Deadpool? Yes. Yes. All right. Sorry to sound creepy, but yes. Go yes. ahead. Go ahead, Monica. Okay. So if you have not heard anything about this fabulous, wonderful, and my dad, a little sexy man. His name is Deadpool. We don't, we don't talk about sex on the radio. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. We're adults. That's oh. what humans do. <laughs> yeah. Where do you think babies come from, Eddie? <laughs> All right, so talk I'm about so this sorry, movie. Eddie. Um, it is an amazing movie. I went to see it this past Saturday, and my mother came. My mother came How did along. that go, watching that with a parent? <laughs> okay, here's the thing about my mother. My mother's not like your average parent, you know, person that's like, oh, you shouldn't be watching these kind of movies, yada, da, da, da. No. That was a good mom impression. I, I could, or I could does she, do Or that. does she say, like, well, you know, Monica, I don't know if you should be watching those <laughs> movies. <laughs> with with the sex and the, and the, and the bad, filthy words. <laughs> no, you shouldn't be watching the movies about that. With the words and the actions and the violence and oh, it's so 
so terrible. Oh, that was that was actually a really good voiceover. Thank you. All right, so to the movie. Back to the movie. Uh, no, my mother, she really wanted to go see it. Uh, she's the one that got me in the comic book movies when I was younger. And it was outstanding. But might I say, do not ever, and I mean ever, take your children there. Ever. Unless they're over 17. Because then it's legal. Because then it's legal. Libby, what did you think about the movie? I loved it. Um, this might sound super philosophical, nerdy, but that's kind of my jam, Holmes. So, um, <laughs> home slice. Home skillet. slice. Home, home skillet. Home skillet. I love it. Well, um, so Deadpool claims at the beginning of the film that he's not a real hero, like not a superhero. But he does a lot of super cool things. Bad Apple, because I can't say another thing on air. Um, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> um, he's very heroic, in my view, because he's, he's humble. He doesn't say, I'm this superhero who's going to go save the whole planet. Um, he just saves the people that he loves. And in that way, I think he keeps it more personal. Um, have anyone... Has anyone else in the studio watched um, Watchmen? Watchmen? No. I saw Watchmen, yes. Yes! It was awesome. Back in radio character. <laughs> it was very, very um, cognizant, I think, of that um, in themes because it's, it's very much questioning what a hero is. And I don't know. I think that there's something more honorable kind of about the hero who sort of gives up everything for the one person in their lives than the person who's like, I'm going to go save a city because I'm a cool dude. How did Ryan Reynolds do? I know this is his first superhero film since he did The Green Lantern, was it? Yeah. Yeah. He has a very nice acting presence. Screen presence. I was going to say something else, but <laughs> but the presence of his amazing acting skills, just, yes. they overtook that. So what you're saying is he is... a good package. So what you're, thing is, what you're saying is he's a good asset to the, to the motion picture. Yeah. Uh, Definitely. Yes. He <laughs> played Deadpool to A T. Um now personally for myself and, and I do apologize if anybody gets angry at me, I have never really read any Deadpool comics. Um have you, Libby? No. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to to enjoy this film. That is true. You unlike really the other ones, whether you read the comics or not, I do not think it would be you know, like they always say, like comic book fans never want to go see the movies because they'll always be criticizing them. But for this one, I don't think you really have much or anything to criticize. Well, and all the reviews I've heard have said that it has a really nice balance between all of the action sequences and some of the more fun and, I guess, provocative script that they have included in Deadpool just because that's a part of his character, a part of his person. And so it seems like they've done a great job with the film, and I look forward to seeing it as soon as I get the chance. All right. So obviously, if you haven't seen Deadpool yet, you should go and watch it. Of course, there will be a review in this Friday's Mast. So make sure you check that out. That was as last well. Friday's Mast. That was last Friday's. You can check that out. That's the one from the 19th. If you don't want to hear it from us, you can hear it from Mr. Sam Ellison. Yes, he has a lovely review waiting for you. So it's online right now. That's where you need to go. Massmedia.plu.edu to check out that story and more. Thanks, Monica. Thanks, Libby. And coming up here after the break, we'll be talking about some vandalism here on campus. But before that, we're going to take, uh, take a little moment here to listen to some music. The song is Electric Love here on Laser. Welcome back to the Radio Hour. Brought to you by Mass Media here on Laser, Loot Air Student Radio. If you want to get in on the conversation tonight, because we're having so much fun, right, everybody? Yes. You, you can talk to us uh, right over the phone. We'll put you in. Uh, 253-535-7332. Again, that's 535-7332. Uh, you can also hit us up on our Facebook, facebook.com slash PLU Mass Media, or you can tweet us at PLU Mass. So our last story that we're going to talk about here tonight is there's a little bit of vandalism on campus. January was a, month, a rough month. January was apparently a really rough month for that. Paris, what happened? Well, there were a variety of incidences, unfortunately. But the main one was a, f I guess, a f painting that was 
uh, it used to be in Karen Hilly Phillips Center, and I believe that it has now been taken down since the vandalism occurred. But it was worth hundreds of dollars, which in Washington terms means that the uh, the I guess the severity of the crime is determined on the price of the object. So if this person is found guilty um, once they are found, then it could be a gross misdemeanor and they could be charged up to one year in jail and up to $5,000 in fines. So just make sure that you know all of your laws before you do something silly like vandalism. But essentially, there was just a painting and it was by a former student here and it was in the Karen Hilly Phillips Center. And sadly, a person came on campus and now it is no longer. They were trying to practice their artistic freedoms on somebody else's work. Please, please don't do that. Yeah, it's just, you know, it, it's, you know, it's kind of hard for me to say, you know, who did that or, or what may have happened to it. And I know that uh, campus safety isn't is uh, investigating that and some other uh, incidences that are going on here. And um, but, yeah, I mean, to take somebody's work of art and, and just and just do that, it, it's not funny. So. If you know if any of you listening out there tonight know anything about this, you know, please contact Campus Safety because you know this is somebody's art. They spent time on this, and now it's literally destroyed. And if you ever have any artistic urges, please do not take them out on someone else's painting. Maybe you can grab a washable um, marker and just draw something on a bathroom mirror because that's what the girls on my third floor bathroom do, and it works. That is how you can, act, I guess, adequately express your artistic freedom with no harm to anyone. No harm, no foul. All right. Well, um, Paris, I know before you say anything else about what may have been going on on campus, um, I know that you work for Campus Safety, so we might want to... I do, full disclosure. So I am not technically allowed to comment on anything. Those are just facts. Those are publicly released. And if you want to read a full article about that, that was also in the February 19th edition of The Mast. And also included in that edition is our lovely CSI report, which is the Campus Safety Investigations. And it's a big one because it encompasses all of J-Term. So usually it just talks about a couple incidences that Campus Safety has responded to in the last week. But we had a couple weeks to catch up on, so whoever wants to take over. (laughs) Definitely. So the other thing that's happened is that the um, public restrooms in South Hall... And I live in South Hall, and this is quite unfortunate. But the public restrooms down the first floor have been damaged severely. And there's, you know, we're, we're definitely going to cover this. We're going to bring it to you all. But there is, from what I understand, some, some, some vandalism going on elsewhere in campus. But I know that just this past, uh, about two weeks ago, our resident director sent out an email saying that there was some more damage done in South Hall and that it's so I don't know what's going on. People are ripping stuff off of walls and and that's not the way to take out your your anger, guys. <laughs> apparently people have also been ripping the bark off of trees. Apparently there's some vandalism in Red Square where somebody stripped a tree of its bark. So you all need to take that anger and channel it into other things like um, step aerobics, like step aerobics, like um, you know crochet, um, self defense classes. If you so desire to go that route, you know go go to go to chapel. Tree hugging. Hug. Yeah, hug the trees. Hug Don't the tree. hurt the trees. Hug the tree. Um, join a choir. Um, join a uh, <laughs> join a join a an outdoor rec. Uh, adventure, uh, uh, join an intramural sport. <laughs> I mean, there's so many things that you can do with your time. And if you're angry about something, please, we have a great group of counselors up on the third floor in the university center who, that's what they're here for. They're here to help you. And it's so. included in your tuition if you're a student here. Yeah. And plus, I mean, you can always go to your faculty advisor. Or even just your friends. As someone who has dealt with anger issues before, I've just gone to my friends. They've been wonderful people that have helped me out. Definitely. So, yeah, don't feel the need to lash out, especially (laughs) on artwork and stuff that costs money. And, yeah. (laughs) Um, Anyway. Another thing is um, music is often therapeutic when you have anger issues. 
and laser is a great opportunity for sharing your musical <laughs> love. So if you ever want to be a host, yes. Eddie. Well, if you ever want to be on laser, if you want to do a music show, you can just email L-A-S-R-G-M at P-L-U dot E-D-U. That's laser G-M at P-L-U dot E-D-U. Or just come in during our posted office hours and we'd be happy to get you on the air. Or you can always write an opinion piece if you're that angry in the mass. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's nothing like a little bit of verbal jousting. Just, I guess written jousting. Just stab that keyboard with your fingers and let it fly. It's true. Writing and if is you have friends, If you have friends who you have a differing opinion with... We can always feature something called a head-to-head where we will post your two arguments side-by-side in the mast, and that is always a fun way to compare your two arguments. Definitely is. Why, right. why fist fight when you can, you can do intellectual battling? Thank you, Paris, for that. And, uh, well, that's it. I think we've come, to the, we've come to the end of our show. Aww. I wish we had one of those, like tracks that plays that you can just request whatever emotion you want so you can have the applause or you can just have the really sad Aww, well, I live for the applause, applause applause that was for earlier um you could always just sing don't cry for me argentina the that's also is, a great song i've never left you mm-hmm. and then the wild days definitely kind of works with college <laughs> i mean we're wild right here spending our tuesday night in giving people good laser. advice about how to get rid of anger all right. That was fantastic advice, Libby and Paris and everyone. All right. So what a positive way to end the show, guys. <laughs> it is such a positive way. I love that. We should do this, like, every single time. We should do this every week. Just give people what? advice at the end. <laughs> I don't know. That might, that might be pushing it. Well, I mean, we want, our, we want our listeners to be free thinkers. True. They are free thinkers. Well, just, like... Little ideas, but then, you like, you know, come up with your own ideas. We'll plant the seeds, and they can just water the flower. Yes. Be sure to listen to Loot Air Student Radio all week for an eclectic mix of music and talk. Make sure to listen to After Hours with Rami and Kyle, Thursdays at 7 p.m., and listen to Sports Talk with Christian Bond and Killing Westering, Fridays at noon. I'm Paris Franklin. And I'm Eddie McCoven. This has been the Radio Hour, a convergence of mass media and laser, Loot Air Student Radio. Thanks for listening, and good night.